Welcome to Chapter 9, Purchase of The Chapter 9 Essential Outcomes. You will record transactions into the Special Purchases and Cash Payments Journals by A. Identifying accounting concepts and practices related to purchases and cash payments for a merchandising business. B. Journalizing purchases of merchandise using a purchase journal. C. Recording cash payments and cash discounts using a cash payments journal. D. Preparing a petty cash report and journalizing the reimbursement of the petty cash fund. E. Journalizing purchases, returns, and allowances and other transactions using a general journal. F. Connecting key terms in the chapter with application. Nine dash three accounting terminology. Petty cash fund. This fund enables a business to pay cash for small expenses without without writing a check. Petty cash account. This is the account that will be established for the petty cash fund. Petty cash box. The petty cash box is a cash box that houses the petty cash money and it is usually kept in a safe. Petty cash report. The petty cash report is prepared whenever we replenish petty cash. Cash short. Cash short is the amount on hand is last than the recorded amount. Cash over is the amount on hand if it is more than the recorded amount. Cash short and over account. This is the account that is used whenever cash is short in petty cash or cash is over in petty cash. It, it the cash short and over account is a temporary account. Its balance is determined by the shortage or overage. If you have an overage, you will have a credit balance. If you have a shortage, it will be a debit balance. It is treated like an expense. Preparing a petty cash report when we have a shortage. Step one, we will write the date and custodian name on the petty cash report. Two, we will write the fund total. The fund total is the amount that is recorded in the petty cash fund account. In this case, we have $250 in our petty cash fund. So underneath the second column, across from the word fund total, we will write $250. Then we will summarize our petty cash payments. On the petty cash report, the payments are a description. They are not the account titles. So, underneath the explanation section of the payment section, we will write supplies, advertising, and miscellaneous. In the first dollar amount column, we will record the summary of those dollar amounts. Then we will calculate and write the total payments. So we will add up supplies, advertising, miscellaneous, which comes to a total of $214.56. We will write $214.56 in the second column underneath the line less total payments. We will then carry over this amount to the fourth column, which is $214.56. We then need to calculate and write the recorded amount on hand. The recorded amount on hand is the difference between our payments and our fund total. So we will subtract 
$214.56 from the $250 that is in our petty cash fund account. The difference is $35.44. So this is the amount that we should have in our petty cash fund. Then we go to the petty cash box. We count up the amount that is actually in the petty cash box and we will record that on the line called less amount, actual amount on hand. In this case, when we counted up the money in our petty cash box, we had $33.85. We will then subtract the amount on hand from the recorded amount on hand and write the amount in. So we are going to take the $33.85 and subtract it from the $35.44. The difference is $1.59. We will carry this $1.59 over into the last column. Is this a cash short or a cash overage? We can tell that this is a cash shortage because the recorded amount that we should have in our petty cash box is $35.44. However, we only have $33.85, so this is a shortage. When you have a shortage, it is treated like it is an expense. The last step is to determine the total of the replenished amount. Because we have a shortage um, and we treat it like it's, it is an expense, we need to add the $1.59 to the total payments of $214.56. So the amount to be replenished is $216.15. filling out a petty cash report when we have an overage. If we look at the petty cash report, we can see that we did step one, we wrote the date and the custodian name. Step two, we filled in the fund total of $250. Step three, we recorded a description for each of our payments. Step four, we added up our payments to come up with our total payment total of $210.83. We carried that $210.83 to our fourth column. Then we determined our recorded amount on hand, in other words the amount that we need to have in our petty cash box. We subtracted $210.83 from the $250 and came up with $39.17. So this is the amount that we need in our petty cash box. So the next step was to go to the petty cash box, count up the actual amount on hand, which we did, and we came up with $41.34. Notice that the required amount that we needed was only $39.17. Thus, we have more money in our petty cash box than is required. So we are going to subtract $41.34 from our $39.17 and we will have a cash over of $2.17 which we will put in parentheses. We will carry that amount over to our last column. To determine our amount to be replenished, we will subtract $2.17 from the total payments of $2.10.83. The amount to be replenished is $208.66. So now we need to record the petty cash report into our petty cash journal, I mean our cash payments journal. We will write the date, we will put in our account titles, notice it's not just a description, it's the actual account titles. So we have supplies-office, advertising expense, miscellaneous expense, and then cash short and over. Then we will record our check number, 
we will record our expense amounts of $32.33, $50, $128.50. Now, because we have a cash overage, the cash over is not treated as an expense, but as more as revenue. So, we will, because we have a cash overage, we will credit the $2.17. If we had a cash short, we would debit the amount. The last step is to complete column 5, our cash credit of $208.66. To check to make sure this is correct, we will add up our general debits, subtract our credit, and that should equal our cash credit. When we get to the bottom of the cash payments journal, we need to start a new page. When we go to start a new page, we are going to have to total, prove, and rule it before we can carry our totals forward. So the first step is to draw a single line across all five of the dollar amount columns. Then we will write the date. The date is always the last date used on that page. In this case, the last date that we used was the 20th when we recorded a cash payments for ceramic supplies. Underneath the account title, we will write the word words carried forward because we are carrying forward these totals to the next page. Then we will place a check mark in the post reference column. The check mark says or shows that we are not to post these dollar amounts. We will leave the check number column blank. Then we will add up each of our column totals. Check to make sure our debits equal our credits. So we will make sure our general debit plus accounts payable debit, we will add those up and get a total. Then we will add up our credit columns, our general credit, our purchases discount credit, and our cash credit to get a total. If the debits equal credits, then we can double rule all five dollar amount columns. Starting a new cash payments journal page. The first step is to write in the new journal page number. In this case, it's page 22. Then we will bring forward the date from the previous page, which was November 20th. Don't forget to write in the current year. Underneath the account title, we will write the words brought forward, showing that these dollar values were brought forward from the previous page. The check number column will be left blank and a check mark will be put in the post reference column. We will then record our debit and credit amounts. The last step is to verify that your debits equal your credits. When we get to the end of the month, we need to total out our cash payments journal. The first step is to draw a single line across all five of our dollar amount columns. Then we will write the date. This is normally the last day of the month. In the account title, we will write the word totals. We will leave the check number column and the post reference column blank. Then we will calculate our new totals for each of our dollar amount columns. 
please note that when you add up your totals, you need to include not only the transactions, but the dollar amounts brought forward. We then are going to make sure our debits equal our credit totals. If they do, we will double rule the $5 amount columns. If they do not, we have to go back and find our error. It is now time to do 9-3 work together. Please open your accounting book to page 253. You will need work together page 197. Please complete the problem. If you need assistance, please let me know. When you have finished 9-3, please return to this PowerPoint. That's all folks. It's now time for you to try some problems on your own. At any point in time, if you need assistance, please call me over or let me know.